speak class. What up, what up, what up? Yo, 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 what's good, what's good, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy C Class, it's FCC TV. We can't stop a moving culture. Today, we got a special, special guest in the building. If you don't know by now, Shade 45 Smitty. I didn't know about Shade 45 Smitty too. I've met Smitty, I need to know the Shade 45 Smitty. But today, we got a new guest in here. You know what I mean? Tell them who you are, tell them what you do. We're gonna get into some real shit. I mean, my name's Smith from Brooklyn. Just do what I do. Oh, hold on for a second. Let me see something. Oh, oh, just pull this stuff in the city news, what's going on, y'all? Tune in, hit that like, hit that like. We got a special yeah, guest in here. Yeah. We got a special guest in here. All right, so we so back now. This one, we both recording. So we tuned in right now, Shade 45 Smith. So tell them about your company, Backdoor Movements, out of Brooklyn. Tell them about your company and what you do inside this hip hop industry in New York City. I mean, I connect the dots, you know what I'm saying? I talk, be cheap. You want something done when it comes to music. You know, you hit me up, you know, we chop it up. We come to agreement and I make it happen. That's pretty much the gist of it. So with, with that being said, do you work with artists that's just signed? Like acts that just signed or independent acts? Like what acts do you Nah, I actually work? work with like artists that have no buzz at all that you probably never even heard of. And I develop their buzz. I, I build it up from the ground level. So that's, that's good, that's good. One of the reasons why I definitely want to get you up here too because a lot of artists that don't know things go on behind the scenes to make artists go where they go. A lot of artists think just they see people somewhere and just guess it happened for them and it doesn't work like that. There's people like this behind the scenes that make sure things go right. So tell them all, a few of the artists you've worked with, a few of the things you've done in the industry, but the people who don't know that's out there watching right now. I mean, I worked with the best of them, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, my brother Fred the Godson. He was a brother that, you know, I worked hand in hand with. You know, I worked with Beanie Siegel up to last week. We shot a video. Um, DJ K Slay, shout out to him. DJ Cell, shout out to him. I, I, I work with everyone pretty much. You name an artist, I put in some work, connected some type of dot or there's some with them, you know? One of the things I want to ask you too, because, you know, you never see it amaze me. You know, if you follow Smith at his Instagram, I'll give it to y'all. You always see something new, something different. So one of the things I saw from way back that I didn't even know about, that I want to ask about was Smith had, had fam going around with him in Brooklyn. Like, that's one of the big artists that's not even from this, you know what I mean, part of the region. And we saw him pop up with you. So tell me more about how the hell you get with Rallo. I mean, my people's from Atlanta hit me up and was like, you know, we got an artist out here from Atlanta moving around. You know, we want you to link up with him, take care of him, make sure he good get him a few looks, a couple of interviews and stuff. So I did that, I proceeded, went into the city, met up with him, good brother, you know, called my man Doggy Diamonds up one time. Doggy was on the way, got an interview, linked my peoples up at Forbes DVD. And I mean, the rest was history. He was a good brother. And up to now, you know what I'm saying? Our relationship's just been strong. So pretty much, you met Rallo before the world met him, before he got big. Oh, definitely. So definitely. what was that like, meeting the artists from down there? Like, what was the interaction like? Like, for as people who never met an artist from down there, like, what's the interaction was? I mean, it was a good vibe, you know what I'm saying? He a down-to-earth brother, no Hollywoodness, and it was just a good good vibe. You know, everybody put on their pants two, two legs at a time, so, you know, that's how I go about every situation, no matter how big or how small. So he was a good brother. Speaking of Fred the Gossam, because I actually did a song with Fred the Gossam because of you, you know what I'm saying, through the connect. So pay attention, y'all. You know, the rest of the piece of Fred the Gossam. You know what I mean? Tell me how that impacted you being an artist, you know what I'm saying, industry, and having him as a friend and as an artist at the same time. Like, I mean, I was crazy with Fred, you know. Like, Fred was really, like, my brother. Like, I hit Fred. Anything I needed where we could break some bread or something, Fred was one of the top three artists that I call right away, like, yo, Fred, let's get this first. Let's do this. Let's do that. You know what I'm saying? And I hit Fred actually a couple of days before he passed. And when I hit him, you know, he sent me a text message. It was touching, you know, due to the family and all that. I'm not going to re reveal it, but pretty much, you know, he let me know he was in the hospital and that he loved me. And, you know, I was just like, damn. When I heard he passed, I was like, this can't be real. Like, that touched me right there. Absolutely, man. It touched the whole city, man. And speaking of artists with situations, you know, that was a first situation on the health side. How was it 
being a businessman, moving shake up, dealing with artists who may come with trouble pads, beef, stuff like that. How does that work with you? Do you pick, do you business with, or do you, don't you like, what is that for you? I mean, I'm gonna be real with you. If if most artists talking that rap and stuff, you know, they supposed to be gangsters. So, you know, that comes with the game. So, I mean, real always recognize real. I always know how to move accordingly with people. You know what I'm saying? If, if they got their issues, that's their issues. The way I move is how I move. So I don't, I don't never, you know, thank God it's never, you know, a clash or anything. It's always just love, you know what definitely, I mean? Definitely, definitely. Stuff like that becomes with middle this, that, third, and I mean, all over music. Um, speaking of Beanie Siegel, I see you said earlier he's working with Beanie Siegel. What was the extent of your working with Beanie Siegel? Man, I've known Beans for almost 20 years. I mean... I've done shows all across the country with him from Miami to Texas to um, Cali to New Jersey to Connecticut. So, you know, Beans is like the big brother I never wanted, you know. It's, it's more like that's family right now at this point. How did that come about? You from New York, you from Philly. How did y'all connect in the bar come strong from people who didn't know each other? Well, I met Beans through my man, Dion McPhee, shout out to him. You know, I played football at the University of Connecticut, so my man got drafted by the Eagles, so I ended up going out to Philly, and he was like, you know how it is, the rappers want to be ball players, the ball players want to be rappers. He told me he was with Beanie Siegel, and you know, it's like Beanie Siegel, I grew up with him, <laughs> listening to Beanie Siegel. Yes. Pulled up on him, the vibe was right, you know, from, from the jump, from the gate, the vibe was right. And I always had that business mind, you know, make a quick dollar, and that's what we did. So you witnessed him being a bull, spit them ferocious rhymes oh, and yeah, everything? Definitely. Been around for, for years with Beans. That's the homie right there. So part of Philly is a bunch of artists. What artists you connect with from Philadelphia besides Beanie? Have you worked with other people from State Property or exclusively with him? No, nah, I worked with everyone, really. Young Chris, you know, bumped heads with him a couple of times, got a couple of verses from him. Neef did a couple of shows with him, Freeway. Um, shout out my eight gang crew out there, Garcy, Ready. Nah, Philly, um, there's an upcoming artist, Reek Raw, check for him. He sings, like, he do some crazy, he remixes songs, but his lyrics is crazy. Reek Raw, remember that name, check out for him. You know, Spade O, Dutch and Spade, that's family. I brought both of them up to Shade 45, so. I got deep ties in Philly. You know, Meek Mill, before he even got on, he came out to Brooklyn, went to a spot called Albany Manor. I'll never mm. forget, Beans called me, told me he was coming to Brooklyn. His manager at the time, I don't know if it still is, was a Muslim brother by the name of Phil. Got us up on a three-way, met them at Albany Manor, and, you know, we, we held it down, you know. I'm known to hold it down. Definitely, definitely. So, so far as New York go, what um what what what's New York climate like to you? Cause you've been around for a while. What's the climate like to you now from when you first started the game? How do you feel? It's great. It's better. You feel it's thriving. I mean, right now I think Atlanta got it. I ain't even Atlanta. gonna hold you. Atlanta got it. They working together. Everything in New York is a doggy dog world. You know, if we work like Atlanta and help to uplift people and take them to the next level, then you know we'd be a lot further. But we don't. So for that reason, we don't got the crown right now. But we got hella talent. New York, Philly, you know, we got hella talent now. Yeah. So next question I want to ask you is right. We see you were dressed down with the savage on and everything. Yeah. I want to talk about what is like a day in the life, shade full five smitty, got your hat on your suit. You know what I mean? I'll be watching you come through dressed up shop. What's the day in life of shade full five smitty? I mean, I deal with finance, so you know I'm chopping numbers up all day doing that getting phone calls, my phone don't stop ringing, you know, from different artists, coast to coast, country to country, you know, just trying to connect dots and get to the bag every day. That's that's what it's about, you know? Being a black entrepreneur, um, who people don't know, because a lot of people see success, they think, oh, they just doing it, he's doing it. Um, tell them how long you've been around and a little bit about the trials and relations to make it to where you at today. <sighs> Man, I could be here all day <laughs> talking about that. I mean, I've been around, I've been doing this for like a good, like, i say like 10 to 15 years, just grinding, being around the music, you know, just, you know, even before I was in the music game, like, 
I was in it and didn't know I was in it just, you know, by my association with people that I knew, you know, from the street, from being from Brooklyn and just, you know, associating with certain people and come to find out they rappers and, you know, it's been a vibe. But as far as trials and tribulations, I mean, I'll tell you one. Um, I brought Lloyd Banks to Brooklyn. Didn't know a thing about nothing. Just <laughs> knew, like, you know, you get Lloyd Banks in Brooklyn. You get a club, bring them out. I thought I would have made a million dollars. I think I gave Banks, like, 13, 14,000 cash on my own. Um, I got DJ Magic and Young Chow and Cypher Sounds at the time. Mm, big dog. Yeah, Hot 97 had the promo going, had the flies all across Brooklyn, um, rented out CPAC, bought out the club, 8,000, thought there'd have been a million people in there. Man, that night there was probably about 100 people in there the oh, most. Man. Took a crazy L, lost about 20 racks that night, but mm. that put me in position and people started wondering, who was that dude that brought Lloyd Banks to Brooklyn? You know what I'm saying? And, Different artists started reaching out to me like, yo, could you do this? Could you do that? And that's where I started branching out into managing different artists. So I took an L, but in the long run, it was definitely a W. Shout out Lloyd Banks on that. Shout out um, Reg Rock, too. He put that together. You scared me, but it's all good. Now, like you said, um, you put it together with managing. So for artists out there who says they need a manager you know, anything like that, what would you tell them, like, what do they need, what they should be prepared for if somebody come up to you and like, yo, I need management and X, Y, Z? I mean, as far as a manager, you, you got to go with who's genuine and real. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people out here just for a dollar bill, you know. So if it's about a dollar bill, that's not a good manager. A good manager is someone that generally wants to see you win and there's a passion for the grind, you know what I'm saying? Once there's a passion for the grind, that grind would always be there, you know. Only the strong survive out here. I've been grinding for years. I done passed people that was rapping and doing this and that before me, and I passed them. So, you know, you just got to stick to the grind. That's the bottom line of it. A uh, question I got, right? This is a question I got to think about. Um, you model, you manage models, work with models, stuff like that throughout the years. I know women, women in the industry. How is it being a man in the industry to be professional and not being a Stevie J, Rich Dollars, and all that's just fucking them and false promises? Well, I'm going to be... I'm if the ass is all fat and juicy. I mean, at the end of the day, I think you got to just focus on the business and just separate the two because, you know, a lot of females will look at you and be like, oh, you do this and you do that and you know, but that ain't the type of woman a man like me would want or would want to entertain so when it comes to business a female artist hits me up and it was like i want to work you know i let them know what's your budget what's going on so they know off top how much they paying it, for it yeah it's business <laughs> no, you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying you know. yeah. no, definitely definitely because you know a lot of times in business when people watch tv so this is why the reason i do these interviews because a lot of people only know what they see on tv to understand Facts. what's really going on behind the scenes Facts. i like to bring people here who understand that so now move on to another situation you had you went from, I was there working with K-Slay to becoming a major figure, helping him do stuff behind the scenes and all that. How did that come about, coming from where you come from? I mean, it's no big story. Me and K-Slay, we just click, you know what I'm saying? Like, we met up to a, a different artist that I was pushing at the time. I ain't even going to mention him, but we <laughs> met up and, you know, it's all love and, you know, everything happens for a reason and, me and the bond with K Slade just got stronger and, you know, real recognized real. He was having these events, you know, you came through a couple definitely, of times. Definitely. We go through mob and support it. Definitely. And, you know, it's, it's just a, like everybody, like I said, everybody puts on their pants one leg at a time. We all bleed, bleed red. So, you know, it's just natural. Me and his relationship just started being natural. The bond got tighter and we started getting to the bread. That's about it. So being an industry executive, I've asked this question. A lot of people in hip hop ask this question. Um, what do you prefer, independent or major? Well, for the artists who ask you. I mean, independent. You know, you, independent is always the best way to go. If if you don't got to put up, if if you could put up two dollars and make ten, but you go the label route and they give you ten, but then want back eight, like. With a flip, you a hustler, you know numbers, you know what time it is. So, independent is always the route I would go. 
now I could talk about New York City buzz and saying, are you in tune with it? Like who who are some of your artists that you like that's up and coming now? What's the Smith has I mean, I like Don Coleon. My my artist King Bo, he got a son out there in Queens. He grinding hard. Bo. You know what I'm saying? I like him. Um, who else I like? I like a few artists. I don't want a fresh old Franklin. That's my man. I'm pushing him hard too. I like him. He got good music. You know, check out for him. I like Superstar Marco. Shout out my AMG click. You know, Frank, Big Ed. You know what I'm saying? Superstar Marco. I got a couple of different artists that I like, but you know, those dudes check for it. You know, I like the ground level. I ain't going to shout out no one that's already yeah. on. You know what I mean? So for people who ask, you connected, you taking Keola's business, why wouldn't you start a label? Or haven't you started a record label? Is it more, what is it for you? I mean, you know what? That's a good question. Everyone tells me that, but it's sort of like I'm good in the space that I'm in. You know, I don't want to do too much or oversaturate. I'm good. You know, I'm doing me right now. I'm just getting into it and exactly. just running with it. And wherever the wind blows me, that's where I'm going to run with it. You know what I'm saying? I had a couple meetings with a couple labels that wanted me to get down with them. But you see, I get to that real serious bag with these labels. They want to give you thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 and put the label on you. And you supposed to go out there and be like, yeah, I'm down with this label and make money off of that. Like, nah, that's backwards. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I just keep it how I keep it. So is the streaming game actually profitable for young artists coming up? Because a lot of them are talking about, yo, how am I going to get paid off streams where everybody see Tidal, YouTube, and all that. How does that play into this? Bob? You feel streaming is a great thing for the industry, or did it set the industry back? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, it's half and half. It could go both ways. You know what I'm saying? As far as streaming, streaming is always good. You know, you get money off of it. Every stream you get, I don't know the whole breakdown of it, but that's a good thing. But, um, yeah, streaming, that, that's a that's a touchy subject right there because back in the days, hand-to-hand -hand with your CDs <laughs> and all that, you can't beat those days. You know, some ki the kids nowadays, they can't even grasp that where you throw a cassette in, you go buy the mixtapes. I used to go down Flatbush, downtown Brooklyn, get the two for five from the CD, man, I used to get like $40 worth. Like, let me get like eight of them, bro. Hook me up. Let me get two for free. So, you know, people will never understand that. And that was, you know, that was the real grind right now. Streaming, you know, I, I don't trust nothing that could be fake or, or, or you with, know, right? or tampered with. So you don't know what you're really doing out here if your numbers ain't real. You know what I'm saying? So. I mean, nothing like back in the days, hand to hand with the CDs and all that. You see what you actually doing with the sound scan and all that. They rig numbers, like so. You never know what you actually get it. So yeah, actually that that sound scan. We're actually about sound scans. Why you had about how Billboard is cheating and how all these things going on. Do you feel like there should be a a, a, a black label that runs hip hop far as a uh, own entity, whereas most labels are owned by white people? Do you feel like? We need more structure. How Swiss B said, it need to be a retirement fund for legends. Like, do you think it needs to be restructuring of our culture? I mean, definitely, definitely. There's no way as a black man you sell millions of records and you make millions of dollars and you broke right now. You know, there should definitely be something in play as far as you getting a financial advisor, you getting an accountant, you invest. You know, Nipsey Hussle. You know, rest in peace. He spoke on that. You know. I was big on his teachings and, you know, stuff that he stood by. Like, you got to invest. You can't make all that money and buy clothes, jewelry, cars, and all that. What you invest in, what you get in back, like, where's the residual income? You know what I'm saying? What are you doing? What are you doing to supply for your kids and all that? Or you just want to get flat for the moment and then be broke 10 years down the line, you know? But, you have know, you knowledge is power, pretty much. Have you had the chance to meet Nipsey? I've seen a few videos, even in Browns. I mean, I mean, in Brooklyn years ago. Have you had a chance to meet Nipsey? I actually met Nipsey Hustle twice. I met him one time in the city, and I met him at Hot ninety seven Summer Jam. And I've been on the phone with him a couple times too. You know, shout out Spider Loke in Cali. He got me on the phone with him a couple times, so we chopped it up a few times. So, speaking of Nipsey Hustle, what do you feel can change? from rappers getting on, getting hot, and then as we see, getting killed. Like, what do you think is the problem where you get right there and it's always? 
I mean, I'm gonna be real with you. I think the problem is sometimes a lot of these rappers try to keep it real. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't always, you gotta move at your own speed. Like, they wanna go back to the hood and post up. You got half a million dollars. These dudes out here is hungry. He just bought a $3 hero. And he gotta save that other half of the hero till tomorrow. So you coming back, you ain't showing no love. You ain't giving back to the community. But you want to come around, you fool. That's what they call that where I'm from. You fooled. So, you know, it's always important to, you know, just stay conscious, stay rooted, stay grounded, and just know when you come back, you know, you always got to give back to them wolves so they don't eat your ass. Definitely. Real talk. So what artists you working with right now? What projects you have going on? What's currently on the plate of CEO Smith? I mean, I got a lot on the play right now, man. With this COVID, it kind of slowed everything down, but I'm working with a lot of artists, you know. Um, I got Fresh Old Franklin, he doing his numbers. I got PTK and Y, he doing his numbers. My dude MJ from Chicago, he doing his numbers. Roly the artist, he doing his numbers, you know what I'm saying? Working with the production side to a couple of dope producers people got to check for. My dude Big Reek, you know what I'm saying? Big Reek production. Definitely got to check for him. BDM since day one. My dude Stan the Man, definitely go check for him. He doing him out there. Gotti Gator, Gotti Gator, go check for him. You know, Austinist, Heat Makers, go check for them. So, you know, wherever the bag is, I'm, I'm there. I'm working, you know. So that's about it. I know. So artists, let them know um, if y'all need features, y'all need connects, radio, club. One thing I always tell artists that you think people just get on, get on. You have to build with people who can connect you. Like I was talking to a kid and he was like, yo, he don't want to make no artwork for his single. He don't want to do that because he feel like he just want to be a single artist, put it out there like that. I'm telling him like, yo, the guys you follow and have people behind them that's helping them get on these shade 45, this is 50s exactly. Like it's not just a um, lottery, take a song and throw it out there. You know what I'm saying? So let them know how they can reach you. They want to reach you for these services. Nah, it's a machine, man. Don't let nobody fool you or lie to you. My motto is talk is cheap, you know what I'm saying? So if you about your business and you want to work, you know, you get at me. My Instagram, my Twitter, um, S-M-I-T-B-D-M-C-E-O. S-M-I-T-B-D-M-C-E-O. Smith B-D-M-C-E-O. My email, Smith B-D-M-C-E-O, just like my Instagram and Twitter, the number one at gmail.com. So my email, Smith BDM CEO, the number one at gmail.com. So and before we go, me. I always ask people these two questions. The yeah. first one's a new one, but the first one I'm, I'm gonna say is um, did you watch the verses with Snoop Dogg and DMX? I actually didn't. Oh, you ain't catching I, I, oh, I was gonna that. ask you. What I, I you missed that. With. I missed that. And you know what's so crazy? I literally was driving over here and I saw Snoop on the gram. With the homie Beans, so he just got off. So oh, I wow. Facetime okay. Beans, like, yo, I see you on the on IG with Snoop. You doing your thing, so but nah, I didn't even get a chance to see that, yo. All right, so another classic question I'm asking everybody: Ether, did did Nas win or Jay Z? Oh man, I'm from Brooklyn. You can't even ask. Okay, that. I'm, okay, okay. I'm Jay Z. Right, right. I'm rolling with Brooklyn. Exactly. Man. I Brooklyn, have people. Brooklyn go that. hard. You already know what time it is, man. I'm with Jay Z all day, every day. Out of all the artists you work with so far, who haven't you worked with that you want to connect with? Oh, man. An artist that, well, of course, I'm going to go big, Jay-Z. Mm. I mean, I bumped heads with Jay-Z a couple of times, you know, Terminal 5. I was actually in a room by myself. Beanie Siegel took us to Terminal 5 to a concert he was performing. And let me tell you the crazy thing. As soon as I pull up in there, mass security, everything, we go through this long hallway, Bunch of big bodyguards. As soon as I turn the corner, swear to God on everything. As soon as I see turn the corner, Dwayne Wade right there, Carmelo Anthony, Pet Cos was there. Um, Damn. Who else was there? About a billion dollars right there. Yeah, and Jay Z. <laughs> and I'm walking down the hallway. It's just us in a narrow hallway. And I'm like, damn. And I'm looking at he like, yo, what up? And I'm like, oh, shit, what up? That's Jay Z. So I definitely want to work with Jay. That's, that's of course. If I could get, see, that's a label that I want to get down with Rock Nation. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I hear that Rock Nation. Rock Nation. Watching. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I got a couple peoples over there at Rock Nation. I had a couple meetings over there. You know, shout out Polo, you know. But if that bag right, I'm coming. If not, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Has there been any 
celebrity you work with that you were starstruck or you couldn't believe, like, besides Jay-Z, like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm next to this person like that? Nah, not really. Not you really? know, I've been around everyone. You know, after you hang out with Jay-Z and like, take pictures and videos and all that with Jay-Z, it's like... What's bigger nope. than that? Yeah, it's like, who, who am I going to see so that's bigger than Jay-Z? I saw you with, um, picture with Chris Rock. Anybody outside of hip-hop that... Inspires you, I saw the Chris Rock flick you threw up. Yeah, I mean, Chris Rock, that's the homie, you know, shout out to Chris Rock, but nah. Nothing bigger than Jay-Z. Nah. Yeah, Jay-Z's a no, dope. No I mean, one bigger than Jay-Z. You know what, Obama. If I see Obama, yeah, I'll probably yeah. be like, oh, shit, Obama. But other than that, oh, I'm a J. Cole fan, too. I like J. Cole, so, you know. Definitely, definitely. And also, check Smith out and Let's Go New Venture Story. Facts, Be facts, up in there facts, and rolling facts, on, so facts. you got to get back to that. Oh, we you definitely said, COVID do. COVID shit slows you down. Yeah, we still yeah, working, yeah. but ain't nothing going to change. FCC TV, you can't stop a moving culture. You hear that? Facts. Can't check stop that it. Check that out. Facts. It's moving. Facts. And we out of here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let this rock for a little while. Then we're going to chop it up and drop some clips. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can watch it all. I'm going to leave everything in the description box, how to follow Smith, how to get in contact with him. It's for the culture. You know what I'm saying? This person's moving the culture forward. One Appreciate thing I learned that. is that Appreciate we are the future of the culture and we have a responsibility. And the people are bringing up here. Is take care of responsibility, or you want to see him up here. Appreciate that. And, and before we go, you know, I just want to salute you. You know, C Class, you've been a stand up brother since I met you. You know, this this deeper than all of this interview, rap, music, all of that. You know, it's times I used to hit you, yo, C Class, yo, smile. I'm gonna be there at 10. You did 955. You've been a stand up dude, you know what I'm saying? And I see you always find different lanes from the music to let's go to. You know, now you got a platform interviewing different people. So, you know, just like how you salute me, I just want to salute you and tell you, you, you know, without people like you putting me in the forefront and letting people know what I do, there would be no me. So, got to say, I appreciate you. How we do one hand watch that. Oh, before we go, facts. let's tell a story, right? Because yeah. he forgot, we forget how, how I met him. Yeah, we, yeah. we knew each other for so long. Yeah, right? facts. I how I met him, tell you how I met him. I was a starving artist hungry. And I was hungry, and what I did was I networked. So I'm on Instagram and social media trying to figure out who's doing what. So when I'm following who's doing what, I keep seeing his name pop up. So I inbox my like, yo, I'm an artist, and such and stuff like that. I want to work. So I like, yo, come down. Come meet me at the pool hall on No Strings, on No Strings in, in Atlantic. Ooh, the pool yeah, hall yeah. downstairs yeah, shit. Pool and then when I came that. downstairs that day, I saw Big Graham was there. And I knew yeah, Graham yeah, from back in Graham. high school. Yeah. And then on the spot, he would be starting to show them here something. That's when me and Big Graham was freestyling back and forth. That was the first day mm. from there. We linked and it's like that. Facts, facts, facts. Medium Clubhouse. Man. Facts, so, Medium yeah. Clubhouse. Shout out my cousin Miles, yo. Vest, what up, too? Definitely. Black J. Shout out my homie Black J, too. What's the Instagram I'm putting in here for them? S M I T B D M C E O. B D M C E O. Yeah. You know. Shout out my dog Big Reap, too. How you spell yours, Reap? I'm putting it in there. Oh, Reap Production. P R O D U T C I O N. Big Reproduction. What's your email again for them? S M I T B D M C E O, the number one, at gmail.com. You already know, y'all. Hit them up. Business only. Hurry, Drake. Shut up. Hit me on no dumb shit. And we out. <laughs>